Be inspired on Liberty Radio. Marriage is a heartfelt promise, a union of two individuals committed to supporting each other and sharing the journey of life together. Would you like to receive the blessing from the altar upon your union? Here is the perfect opportunity. This is an announcement for our next marriage celebration ceremony, a special event where couples will declare their love and devotion to each other. This is your opportunity to celebrate love, unity and the cherished bond of marriage. This is not simply any event, it is a special occasion that will linger in your hearts forever. Whether you have had a civil union or perhaps you have already been living with your partner but now wish to exchange vows in a sacred ceremony, this is your time. The marriage celebration will take place during the Love Therapy Seminar on Thursday 30th May 2024 at 8 p.m. at the Kilburn Universal Church, 234 Kilburn High Road, London NW6 4JP. Seize this opportunity to make your dreams a reality. To register your interest and to gather more information, you can call us on 020-7686-6000 or email love at uckg.org. Allow the marriage celebration to be the beginning of your beautiful marital journey of love. Good evening and welcome to Be Inspired. We're live here from the studio as we usually are. And you saw there a very important event that will happen in May, the marriage celebration. Tonight, I want to dedicate this program here to your love life. We're going to be talking about love, but not love as the world knows it. You know, when we talk about love, people get excited. Everybody likes to hear about love, about marriage, about happiness in love life. But we're going to see what the Bible says about love, something very important that people often over, um, not oversee, but they, they ignore, right? But last week in the hot seat, we had Pastor Hugo there, and we're going to watch also Pastor Anderson. We're going to watch a few highlights of the hot seat in last week's Love Therapy. Tomorrow, I'll be there in Love Therapy. Once again, we're going to have Pastor Michael Boudram Pastor Michael Boudram on, um, on the hot seat. I don't know if the people from Sheffield are connected. Let us know if you're connected. And also Pastor Renato from the church in Leicester. Let us know, Sheffield and Leicester, if you're connected and if you're excited about seeing your pastors in the hot seat tomorrow in Love Therapy. Let's see the highlights from last week. For me, it was at home, my dad, he would do everything that my mom would do. So then when we got married and I remember that we were living in an apartment and something broke and I asked him to fix it. And he's like, no, I'll just call the maintenance guy. I'm like, no, you, this is easy, my dad would do it. In my eyes, I didn't realize I was comparing him, but then I, I realized several of those situations, the same thing happened. And then with Anderson, I realized when he would, like when I would say something and he would stay quiet, I was like, uh oh, that I did something wrong. So then the Holy Spirit showed me that I couldn't compare because I wouldn't like him comparing me to his mother. So then I, I started working on that and as the years have gone by, he's acquired many skills. I never had a reference of, of what a real marriage is. I was born actually out of uh, an affair my father had with my mother. So when, when I got married, even though I had learned already in the church how a husband should be, but when I was actually married, it was very different, very difficult for me to actually know how to speak in a way. Whatever I was upset with, I would just say it bluntly. I wouldn't care if it would hurt her or, or how she was going to receive that. I had to realize that I had a problem. I don't have to say everything to her exactly as it is in my mind. I have to wait for the right time to speak. If I'm upset, sometimes I just hold myself back. I just bite my tongue, count to 10 to 20, and then I wait for the right time to speak. Every time we had uh, an issue or anything it, it would do that I didn't like, I would stay in silence. And when he asked, what is going on, I would say nothing. How did you fix that problem? It was the day that he told me you have to stop with that because that can 
put even your salvation at risk because you are keeping things inside of you. But uh, we had to learn to solve things. I didn't have a reference of father because my father died very, I was four years old. And someone told me, when you married, you have to learn one thing, you are the head. So when we married, I always had that, uh, that spirit of selfishness inside of me. So every time that we have to decide something, every time that we want to do something, even small, I always been selfish, not uh, listening to her, not be flexible, until the day that she said to me, you are selfish. I never imagined myself in that position. But then I start thinking about my attitudes and I noticed that I was being, being very, very selfish towards her. And then we were able to, sell, to solve the problem. We're excited about tomorrow, tomorrow Pastor Michael Budrum and Pastor Renato and of course their respective wives. And we have a lot of people from Sheffield connected here. Uh, we also have Justina from Milton Keynes. Uh, Justina, hello. Your pastor told me that you were over the moon, you and your husband, with the opening of the church in Milton Keynes. I know that tonight we had a service there and I'm sure the church there will break through. Well, in a few moments, we'll be talking to you tonight about God's vision for, for love, for sacrifice, not, not sacrifice, for, for marriage, for relationships. And I say the word sacrifice because that's what love takes. And I was going to talk a little bit about that after the testimony, but we're going to watch this testimony together now, uh, Precious, he from our church in Finsbury Park, and then we're going to come back to see what the Word of God speaks about marriage, love life, relationships. Let's watch the testimony together. We'll be back in just a second. I honestly didn't like myself and I did many things to crave attention. And because I was so sad inside, my family was a mess. I was very insecure and this led me to do many things that I didn't think I would do. My life at the moment is going well. I work full time, I have a good relationship with my family and I have good health. Faith helped me to become who I am today because it helped me to understand that I didn't have to live a life that I was sad or suicidal or confused. Faith helped me to really transform my life because when I understood what faith was and I was able to use my faith, then I was able to see my life move forward. Before finding faith, my life was destroyed. I say this because I was suicidal. I honestly didn't like myself and I did many things to crave attention. I got piercings, I was smoking, I was hanging around with the wrong crowd and I always wanted attention from guys. And because I was so sad inside, my family was a mess. There was fights in the house and I was just altogether confused. I was very insecure and this led me to do many things that I didn't think I would do. I found out about the Universal Church as I was evangelized by one of the members of the church. The Universal Church means home. When I came to the Universal Church, I was able to find a home and people who accepted me, people who loved me without even knowing me. And that's why I call it home. To be universal is to be faithful. When I'm faithful, following the ways of God, that's the only way I can call myself universal because the Universal church, they follow the, the principles of faith. And when you're faithful to God, then you can truly call yourself universal. I learned how to use my faith properly by coming to the services, the meetings at the universal church. The pastors will give advice about how to use our faith, use references from the Bible on how to use faith and what faith was. And they would speak about it in such a personal way that it shook me and it led me to want to go out and try and use my faith. And it works. It really does work. There were times where you know, I would try or, you know, I'll do something and give up. But then when I actually used my faith and I believed in it, I believed in what I was doing, then I started seeing results because the word of God is true. When you do something and you believe in the name of God, you're going to see results. As a member of the Universal Church, I'm able to help people by speaking to them about what my faith has done for me. So I'm able to share my testimony. I'm able to evangelize, you know, in the same way someone evangelized me those years ago and they helped me to understand what faith was. I'm able to do the same for others. I'm an assistant in the church. Therefore, I'm able to sit down with people and really help people who are going through what I was going through those years ago. Today, I see myself as someone who can make it. Before, 
understanding that I can do something and actually complete it was very hard because I was very insecure. I was very low in who I was. But now I have power. I have strength. Even when I go through the toughest of moments in my mind, God assures me that there is nothing that I cannot do because I'm with him. By the power of faith, I've been able to conquer my healing. I've been able to conquer all the internal issues that I've gone through. They've been removed. I have a happy family, I have a good relationship with my family and all in all I have the Holy Spirit. I believe through my faith that is the greatest achievement and it will forever be the greatest achievement because that was the only way that I'm able to still be here today after eight years and I aim to be here for the rest of my life. I don't regret being part of the Universal Church. Through the Universal Church, the teachings, the principles, I've been able to find joy and true joy, it's genuine. Before, I would act like I'm happy, but I don't need to act because it's inside of me. I've been able to learn how to use my faith. I've been to different places, different churches, and only in this church have I learned how to effectively use my faith. And I feel very, very happy to be a part of the Universal Church. Welcome back. There was someone in the chat here that asked for the address of the church in Milton Keynes and our production already put it there. So it is uh, 602 Midsummer Boulevard, Milton Keynes, MK9 3NB. If you know anyone in the Milton Keynes area, let them know that the UCKG has arrived and the rest of the UK get ready because we are coming. Now, um, it's interesting that Someone who spoke a lot about love was someone who spoke about that he chose to remain unmarried. And that was the Apostle Paul. Isn't that interesting? That someone who chose to be or to remain unmarried um, spoke a lot about marriage, about love. Actually, there is, um, you know, some scholars believe that the Apostle Paul had been married and he was either widowed or divorced or just the Bible doesn't mention exactly what happened. But that's beside the point. You know, when we talk about love life, marriage, people don't really know. I, I think love is one of those things where people talk so much about it and they know nothing about it. That's a reality. And I'm talking about people in the world. The vast majority of people don't know what it takes to make a marriage work. And that's why the rate of divorce are through the roof. And the Apostle Paul wrote something very interesting um, in Ephesians chapter 4. From verse 2 it says, With all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. You know, why would the Apostle Paul say bearing with one another in love? Because usually you don't put bearing, which is virtually like saying putting up with someone. You don't put the word putting up with someone and love in the same sentence. Because when you love someone, you're not putting up with a person. It's a pleasure to be around that person. But we have to understand that no matter how much you love someone, there are moments where you get upset about something. There are moments where you have a disagreement. And in those moments, sometimes you want to lash out, you want to get angry, you want to say certain things. But the Bible teaches us in those moments to bear with that person and to bear, not only bear with them, but to bear with them in love. And the world doesn't do that. You know that the world, when people get married, they think like this. When they get together, they think like this. If this if this relationship is meant to be, if we love each other, then it's going to be perfect. And the moment that they find a stumbling block in the road, the vast majority of people, they jump ship. They get out of the relationship because they think clearly this relationship was not meant to be because otherwise we would get along all the time. But guess what? Sometimes we don't get along. And that doesn't mean the person is not good for you. You have friends that you've had for 10 years, for 20 years, and there were times you didn't get along with that person. You still kept them as a friend. And a marriage is like this. Even though people don't like to accept that sometimes you have to bear with the other person, you have to. 
You know, my wife has to bear with me sometimes because I am definitely not perfect. I have my ways of being that perhaps can be annoying sometimes. But this is it. That's why we love each other. We bear with one another. I have Pastor David here with me, here from our church in Finsbury Park. Pastor David, good evening. How are good you? Good evening, Bishop. I'm very well. Thank and then, you. does your wife have to bear with you sometimes? All the time, Bishop. I'll be honest. We All have, the time. Well, we have, to bear, we have to bear with each other, but it's all part of what makes the marriage a blessing, actually. Because we understand that in the same way that God is merciful with us and has to bear with us sometimes with our mistakes and our faults, we have to bear with others. We have to bear with our spouse, our wife, who makes mistakes, and we make mistakes as well, so she has to bear with me, as I was saying. And that's how the marriage becomes a blessing. We become better, we become more patient, and it's, it, it develops us as people. Yeah. You know, for example, I'm here in the studio doing this program with Pastor David, right? I, I saw Pastor David earlier today in the service and during the day, but, the, but this is the extent of our relationship. When the program finishes, I'll go home, he goes home. So I don't really have to put up with him or bear with him, as we were saying, because he has, you know, he, he goes home, even though we live here in the same building. But when you are with someone, that person has to endure with you in, in, in the best of times, but also in the worst of times. And we were talking earlier about the word sacrifice. The reason why many people don't want to do this today is because people don't want to sacrifice. Now, people are very happy for someone to sacrifice for them, but the vast majority of people don't want to sacrifice for someone. That's the problem. So tomorrow, we'll be together here in Love Therapy at 8 p.m. And I'll be here actually an hour before to counsel if you want to receive advice and counseling for your love life. But whether you're single or married, understand this, that at some point in your relationship, and I can tell you already almost from the beginning, you will have to learn to endure with the person who's with you. And that's no bad thing. Because maybe you say, but Bishop, you know, if, if that's how it is, then I don't want to be with someone. But, you know, think about this. This week I was watching a video of um, a wife, this young couple, they were actually a young couple, and they got married, and they were probably married for like four or five years, and the husband had a life-altering accident, and he was no longer the same person. He needed around-the-clock care, and this wife, and I don't know how long they had been in this situation, this wife, she did that. And she did that with a love, at least in the video that we could see, a love and dedication that you can't fake. Now you tell me, doesn't that wife have to bear with the husband in that situation? And how many times the roles are reversed? In love, we have to sometimes bear with what that person is going through. Tomorrow, in Love Therapy, we'll be investing in teaching you the truth about a solid relationship. I'm going to ask Pastor David here now to offer a prayer for you that you want to build a, a solid relationship. If you do, join us tomorrow here in Finsbury Park at 8 p.m. I'll be here, my wife as well, the pastor's in the hot seat, and Pastor William. But now, let's pray for your love life. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray. My Lord and Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I pray now for all those who are connected and they desire a blessed love life, a blessed marriage. And they understand that a blessed love life doesn't, is not founded on feelings and how butterflies or they feel butterflies in their stomach and desire to be around the person all the time, like 
many couples have at the beginning of the relationship. But they understand that a good marriage, a blessed marriage is built on sacrifice. And at times we have to bear with one another. My God help this person who perhaps right now they have had thoughts of leaving their partner. They've had thoughts of breaking up their marriage because they don't feel the same way that they once felt. They haven't realized that bearing with the other is part of a good marriage. But my Lord, hearing this today, they have made a decision. They are making a decision to change, to start to do what they need to do, my Lord, so that their marriage can flourish in the way that you want. I pray for this person, my God, who feels as if their marriage has no hope, my Lord, who feels as if they've they've come to the end of their tether and they don't want to try anymore, my Lord. If there is hope, My God, I ask you to help them, help them to see and find the solution which is in you. Because Lord, you give us strength to bear with others as you bear with us. We pray, my God, that you help this person. We pray that all those who desire to honor you through their marriage, they may receive strength from you right now. I determine, my God, wherever this person is, Perhaps they were looking for the solution. They were looking for the word and they heard it today, my Lord. Give them the strength to put that word into practice and to decide from now on that their marriage will be different. Their love life will glorify your name. My God, I present all those who are connected, who are tuned into us right now into your hands. And I determine that from today on, their love life is blessed. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Praise God. We believe that our God heard our prayer. And if you want to fight for your marriage, you want to fight for your love life, don't give up. Tomorrow is the day to do that. We'll be together here at the Cathedral of Miracles in Finsbury Park at 8 p.m. Join us here because I believe that God still has a plan for you and for your love life. Okay? We'll be back tomorrow here again, live once again from our studio. Actually, someone wrote here on our chat, Bishop, when will you have my pastor or the pastor of my church in the hot seat? Soon, we'll have all of them, okay? But two per week, otherwise it's, it's too many. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll leave you now with one more testimony of faith. God bless you. Bye-bye. When a child talks about their father, it is with a certain pride. However, my father, who had always been my hero, became my greatest enemy from one day to the next. My mother discovered that my father was cheating, and so he had to leave the house. He left the house, and the person who had been my role model became someone who I didn't want to become. I basically became fatherless. I was very attached to him. I had always been very attached to him. What I started to lack at home, I began to look for on the streets. At school, I came across drugs. I had my first contact with cigarettes and then cannabis after that. That was until one day, after having smoked frequently at school, I took it home. That was when my mother saw. Her reaction was of despair, crying. I saw my mother despair in a way that I'd never seen before. That was when the mask I had worn before my mother, pretending to be a good boy, fell off. I had hated what my father had done to my mother, which was making her suffer. And now I'd become worse than him. How I expressed what I was feeling on the inside was through self-harm. I remember that the first time I cut myself, I had bought a razor to cut my arm with, and I had a small sense of relief. That kept growing with time. The cuts kept increasing. The number of cuts to my arms kept increasing. I wanted it more every day because it was a means of relief. My skin was being cut, but that was just 1% of what I was feeling in my soul. 
I didn't care how. I simply wanted to fill the void that I was feeling. I sought relief in my education. I studied and devoted myself and got into university. Every day, before going into class and after I was done, I had to drink. That was my escape. My glass was always full, but my soul was empty. That was until one day when I received an invitation to go to the Universal Church. I was at home. We were having a party at home. I was drinking. But still, they came there to invite me. I had received other invitations before, but I would always tell them no. But on that day, I said yes. I said yes to that invitation. However, later on, on the same day, I went to a party. From that party, I went to another party. These were all fueled with alcohol. Later that night, I came face to face with death. In the middle of that party, I got involved in a fight. In that fight, I don't remember exactly what happened. But I know that the people I got involved with went out to get guns to kill me. It was in that space of time that I managed to escape. However, when I got up the next day to wash my face, my hands were covered in blood. I didn't understand what had happened. I called the guy who had been with me and I asked him if I had fallen or had had an accident. And he said that I'd gotten myself into a fight. I then remembered the invitation that I received and I said, I'm going there. When I entered that place, I looked up and read, Jesus Christ is the Lord. Simply by going into that church, I already felt the peace that was there. I said, this is the peace that I want in me. This is what I need. I noticed that Jesus was the size of the emptiness that was in my chest. That day, I received a word. I don't really remember what was preached. I don't even know what the pastor preached in that service. I just know that I left there a different person. I exchanged drugs and drinking for the Bible and the bars for the church. From the very first day that I went there, I heard about someone called the Holy Spirit. Someone who could be my father. For someone who had lost a father in the past, I now had the opportunity to have a father. However, in order for that to happen, I had to become his child, a son of God. And in order to become a child of God, I had to receive the Holy Spirit. This was when I started to seek him. I recall a book that helps me a lot, the book of the Holy Spirit where Bishop Macedo explains what the baptism in the Holy Spirit is and who the Holy Spirit is. When I was in university, previously, I would go out to bars, but now I would leave the class five minutes early to go to the restroom. And in the university restroom, I would seek the Holy Spirit. I also had the opportunity to take part in a night vigil. I sought him as I had never sought him in my life. I knelt down on the altar, on the steps of the altar, and it felt like it was just me and God in that moment. I poured out my entire life there. I poured out everything that I had done, and I experienced Jesus embracing me there. The peace that I received was so great that the drugs, the drinking, the cannabis, and all the highs that I felt with all the drugs that I took could not compare. You couldn't even measure how joyful I was. The Holy Spirit became my healing, my peace. The father that I didn't have, he completed me. I managed to forgive my dad because I had held a grudge against him. I had held ill feelings against him. 
If I, who had made so many mistakes, was forgiven, who was I to condemn my dad for his mistakes? My life began to take on a new direction. There was this burning and relentless desire in me to win souls, to take what I had received that day to other people. I couldn't be selfish. I thought about this 24 hours a day. I left my job, I left university to follow what Jesus said. Go into all the world and make disciples of every nation. Preach the gospel to every creature. I wanted to take the word of life that I received to the people who are suffering, just as I was suffering one day. Being able to be part of this great work, which has saved thousands of people in the entire world, is a very great privilege to give my life and my time is nothing compared to what I have received from God. And me, who, humanly speaking, had no perspective in life. My future was either death or jail. Due to everything that I was going through. However, praise God that through the Holy Spirit and the Universal Church, where I met the Lord Jesus, I am here. What used to have no life in it, now has life to give to people today. What was empty is now a fountain, to bring life to someone who is lifeless. Today, wherever the Holy Spirit sends me, I'll go, there I will be. I will always say to the Spirit of God, here I am. This has been Be Inspired on Liberty Radio.